Hey, mommies, thanks for tuning in. We've got another exciting episode for you today. We talk about, um, oh, geez, what do we talk about? Well, we talk about uh, uh, the void, and uh, we we kind of uh, walk you into the darkness. I went through a little bit of a rough patch just for a few days, and we just talked about rough patches. Yeah, just and suicidal ideation for just, just yeah, a few just days a- of wanting to end it all. <laughs> Is that even possible? Can you even end it all? Is there an end? We're exploring that today. Really cool, fun episode. Um, it's already, it's only a day later since we recorded, by the way, and I'm feeling fantastic. It was a transient moment that we were able to capture. So and I so saved I hope Shane's you find life. It. Ramin saved my life, and uh, you heard it here, and I hope we save yours as well. Enjoy today's episode. Memorial Day, like any anything, Fourth of July or whatever, we could just like talk about um, patriotism. <laughs> yeah, the science of tribalism and patriotism, and also yeah, the invention yeah. of fireworks, yeah. a Chinese invention yeah. that dates back to six million BC, <laughs> where. Henry Pong it invented was the, the first, first thing that humans invented was fireworks. It was, and and then they they figured out fireworks even before fire. They were trying to make fire and they would go too far with it and it kept ex- escaping into the sky, but they noticed that it would produce a brilliant, you know, display of lights in all kinds of directions. They just had to figure out how to keep the fire in that direction and just kind of roaring. And that wasn't developed for another like 2,000 years, thanks to the uh, decorticator, which is the reason we have <laughs> small fires and that they don't burn out of control. I can't Fire believe is fascinating. you. I can't believe you're a decorticator fan <laughs> as well. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Mind Under Matter. We just, uh, I happened to hit record just in time to to grab a classic uh, Ramin Nazer's impression of science. <laughs> A.K.A. just general <laughs> bullshit. I just do, I do it around the house all the time time to the point where my girlfriend just doesn't believe me about anything if i if i describe anything i'm like paper is eight and a half inches by 11 she's like already looking at me like "Hmm, what's what's the angle here what kind of bit is he trying to do there's always an angle and there's always a bit that's we're we're very opposite in that way i'm i was always my whole life i was always a bit more reserved and I didn't, I, I rarely said anything. And then when I did, it was like, uh, the joke of the day or what, like everyone would be making jokes all the time. But then my, like one thing that I would say would be like the thing that it would be like, remember when Shane said this? And then I was like, all right, that's a key. I'm write that one down. That's oh a- yeah. Having a high, uh, average kind of like the way surgeons yeah. or something, they don't want to have any deaths. Like they'll not all surgeons, of course, but that the type of surgeon that doesn't want anything on their record that tarnishes <laughs> it, just perfect record. Every surgery went off without a hitch. Uh, only exciting stuff, no lost kids on the pediatric operating table. So they don't take any chances on surgeries that might go poorly. Yeah, That's I might amazing. just be taking this from Doctor Strange because the movie Doctor Strange is about this uh, the brain surgeon guy who's like really arrogant. He's like, I'm not going to take on that. Like, what's the... What's the point on taking on that? It's high risk, no reward, not exciting. <laughs> only takes on sexy surgeries, removing a bullet from the brain without... I, I, when you said that, I was like, wow, what book did you read that in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was Doctor Strange. Which, Doctor Strange is a dope movie. It's I, great. The, the older I get, I have a harder and harder time with the superhero stuff. And I thought after the Batman movies, you know, I'm so obsessed with Nolan that I was like, all right, no one can do superhero movies anymore. Nolan just ruined it. And no one can do 
but there's still fun things happening. Spider-Man um, cartoon one. Oh, multiverse. Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, into the Multiverse. Was, I still haven't watched fun. that. I hear it's good, though. It's very good. Um, and, but I always liked, uh, I always liked X-Men a lot. And so I'll watch those. And then I always like kind the of The director is them. a bit problematic from what I hear. Uh, a lot of swimming true? pool assaults. Just look up uh, Brian Singer and just, you don't even have to look up assaults. You know, sometimes you look up someone's name and you look up name and bad thing. And then just see if it comes up with anything. I think that one, if you just write the regular name, it's just like allegation, assault, cover up, cover up, cover up, cover up. But really? So he just assaults people at swimming pool. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just general Hollywood party kind of stuff with the underage boys and whatnot. Like, I don't uh, think it's like, oh, if we got him, it's he's probably a, a lesser offender compared to the. Weinstein's oh, and stuff. So I, just a general Weinstein. Well, or... that's unfortunate. I thought it was uh, f to me the when you said that, what went off in my head was this guy that like goes to Hollywood parties and like gets a little tipsy around <laughs> poolside and just punches people. That's <laughs> that's what I wanted it to be so bad. Instead, it's gross. Ah. Yeah, why can't he just punch the <laughs> underage boys? Wouldn't that be refreshing? <laughs> just Yeah, what if people got <laughs> off without their dick? They just got off through their fist punching people and then they get in less trouble. <laughs> that, that would be a, that would be a way to get uh, publicity. Just like go to um, uh, uh, Shane Moss was call, uh, caught assaulting a child at a middle school, like, <gasps> and then like, oh no, he literally just wound up, clocked a twelve-year-old, <laughs> just like blindsided a twelve-year-old in the street, and that never saw it coming. And everyone would be like, "Whew!" <laughs> oh, he just—he just bloodied a twelve-year-old. Oh, it wasn't for a no sex reason thing. whatsoever. Yeah, it wasn't a sex thing. Thank goodness. I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, I think I was trying instead of using the word rape, I used assault just because I'm trying to be better with language and always like use the exact correct term. I'm also, mm. I'm trying to swear less too. I don't know if I'll do it though. Just when you mm. look at highlight clip, clips of this show that we do, and then I'm just looking at it on my phone, and then my 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 little text under my thing is like, fucking, fucking bitch, bitch shits on a bitch, and then the really? bitch shitted on the other bitch. I'm like, oh, oh I need that's to, so funny. I need to calm down with that a little bit. But also, I, I don't, don't care. Think, yeah, I've... If I thought you swore too much, I would tell you. And, I, and I've never noticed that. I saw in the clip today there is, there, I had, uh, I had uh, like seven likes in like one clip. I'm like, <laughs> and the closed caption just really just highlights it. And uh, Like so but, there's these a little individual uh, like, uh, like dis distinct cells <laughs> in our like uh, whole like body and they metabolize through <laughs> I was uh before this episode so so I had the plan was originally I was going to we were going to start weaving into memory the same idea of like why we uh, uh, select certain ideas that we do uh, transitioning that into memory, and I was going to take a quick break and be like, we should do uh, all about Ramin's autobiography because it would it would transition well into my ideas of how we form autobiographical memories and, and do self-appraisal and stuff, and it'd be a way for listeners to get to know you. And then I had, uh, so we will do that coming up, just not today. And then I had... Remember in episode zero, we were like, even if we're depressed, we should get on and talk about it and capture that. And I just went through like this awful, I had just like, I was in the strangest mood this weekend. It was real dark and just strange. And then there was like some suicidal ideation in there. And, but then just like, what a does that look like to you? 
What is suicidal well, ideation? Like, how far do you take it? You don't actually think about buying the rope and stuff, right? Well, you know, the hardest thing is that now that I've formed a team, it's like the closest to having children. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> of, 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 of like, I got to care for these kids. I got someone's got to look out for them. And, and it's like, I can't just be my retirement. It's like other people are attached to, I need to figure out a way to get enough income so that multiple people can retire off of it yeah uh, you know in 20 years or something like that isn't that, that funny like your like the drives in us whether or not we have children that energy has to go somewhere so if you don't have children it's going to go into your you know your yeah. basket making company or your team and same with religion the energy that we don't use towards religion goes into Marvel movies or Star Wars <laughs> or like uh, social justice stuff, which that's yeah. like a fine, that's a fine uh, angle towards it. Notice how I like, I, I never want to upset any social justice people, I'm like, <laughs> which I've done nothing wrong with social justice. And then if I'm talking about storming the Capitol, these stupid MAGA idiots, uh, uh, but, yeah. this, uh, don't this, but the wokeness is good though. Every part of the wokeness is good, but it's also the, the energy probably comes from the deep need for, being on an adventure, having a purpose. All of it's so complicated. There, there is the, the, the things that I, the things that annoy me the most, because, you know, as someone who made say like my special mating season was a really good example of this, which is like people, people on the right didn't like it because it was evolution instead of, and so it, it, it like pushed buttons of creationism, but then people on the left didn't like it because it said things about gender norms and why, and biological oh, origins for gender even norms. Even back then? Cause this is a decade old now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then also, you know, it wasn't good enough. It was like, if it would have, if, if the quality of the material would have been a bit higher, I think it wouldn't have, you know, you, it's that's like a that that's like like uh Tim Dillon is like kind of a good example of this for me like you know I I just generally don't like conspiracy stuff and some of like his general attitudes towards life I'm I'm not that appreciative of and then but sometimes I'm like well if it's that funny you can do it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know sort of, sort of thing and he uh, is a force like i can see why people get mad at him and uh i mean we talk about it in our in our household sometimes like sometimes he'll tweet something that just really upsets Catherine for yeah. or, or whatever reason and then i go look at him like yeah that isn't a great take i don't really see his twitter much but you gotta admit he's he's one of the best like comedian comedians of this current era just his ability to rant and have these it's a it's a great podcast yeah it's it's i mean i've never listened to his podcast but it's you know it's definitely like like there's it's i respect critical thinking even if it's like if it's if you're using it's about it's about like building it's like when you watch a movie it's like you can build whatever ridiculous universe you want, but things still have to make sense within the universe mm. that you've built. And if things don't make sense within your own universe, that's when people are like, you're a hypocrite or whatever. You know, that's that's when I'm like, ah, oh, that's kind of like sloppy thinking. Yeah. Whereas like if someone's thinking well within their models of reality, I at least like respect it. Yeah, you know? it's consistent. Yeah. And uh, which you and already so, said, like, I like when I, I don't have a word that's different from it. And like you're talking about how it's consistent. I'm like, yeah, it's consistent. <laughs> and and so the, the, the point is, is like, if I, I think that uh, uh, like I would I just tend to I guess the reason why I tend to skew left, even even for a lot of reasons, is that is in like not care that much about the woke movement, even though there is like ridiculous stuff about it and everything else is just, it Which just seems like that... a bigger issue to be like, it, like to say like, Oh, uh, uh, sociology is pseudoscience and be really mad at that. But then be like, but these creationists are, 
okay. Yeah. And like anti <laughs> anti vaxxers, that's free speech. Creationism, we respect what they have to say. But can you believe sociologists? Yeah. <laughs> think culture primes people in certain ways? Like, yeah, I can kind of. Oh yeah. And uh, I was thinking that woke and left and liberal are three completely different things. Yeah. Like yeah. left is kind of more um you know, workers owning the rights means of production, like the more socialist communist thing is left and then liberal yeah. is more about the appearance of basically just not Trump. Like just we want the the facade of it, like bombing things is okay just as long as it's not the the hard left like the hard right is bad, but the hard left is also kinda it's, yeah, it's more yeah. of a centrist thing. And woke was we might have already talked about this, but woke was first coined from Erica Badu and it was a more I don't kind think of, we talked about this. It was a more spiritual kind of thing, like the wokeness, awake, like yeah. re recognizing we're all one and treating one another with respect. And now it's kind of become a more um identity politics thing of uh, yeah. you know, using exactly the right term of this month and being behind this cause and not this one and and so on and so forth. And I don't even know who the head it, there is no head of it. That's what a movement is. It's just kind of a way it it goes, but it's funny that the person who came up with the term is now not even really considered the wokest of the woke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think that there there's a lot of like the third eye kind of stuff that happens on both sides that I just find kind of like, I'm seeing a thing that none of you rubes are seeing. I'm seeing <laughs> through the... Like, yeah, uh, that's okay. like the, calling it woke or calling it red pill is, yeah, it's so arrogant. Assuming yeah. that you see outside the matrix and we're <laughs> all sheep. Like, no, we're either all sheep or we're, none of us are sheep. What if we're all like independent little foxes and not sheep? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I I actually this this is part of my mood. So, but that was that was so that was such an interesting point that you made though about like the 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 desire. Even if you have no, even if you never want kids, you still like want to. Like that's I've never thought about that. We before. do that with our cat, that, but without the um. Without the discipline part, like we we raise a terrible child with the cat because we know that we can't win. Like if we're trying to reason with him, like there's there's certain things you can do. You can stop him from being the worst by giving him what he needs. But if you really want something, it's it's over. He's gonna get it. He's gonna get to go outside. He's gonna get to sit in the chair. You don't get to sit in the chair. You have to go get another chair, or you have to stand, or something. And it's a better life that way. We like it. We like to have like a smaller person that we worship and is more important yeah. than us put yosh in charge of things yeah <laughs> he knows who he is we don't know who we are every day we're like oh what am i doing it's like am i doing the right thing with my career i haven't called my family and friends back he hasn't had a thought like that once and not that because he's incapable of those kinds of thoughts just that that's not him. He, is, he knows better, in he fact. He was literally <laughs> reading the Genghis Khan book. He doesn't read books. Like, his head was lodged in between a book that Catherine left on the bed. And I got some photos of him reading Genghis Khan because he's the reincarnation of Genghis Khan, I guess. That's. I was just thinking about Genghis Khan today, actually. I was thinking about... So this is part of the funk that I was in. And I was thinking about what this the suicidal ideations what are they coming from besides like ah, i had a little too much to drink i gave blood over the weekend and then i right afterwards decided like i'm just gonna get a bottle of booze and <laughs> like get real drunk tonight which is like you're not it's definitely in the because best. it would be amplified because the thinner blood would would get no, you drunk faster no i just felt like getting drunk i don't uh, know what i it was just in a how i wish i drank is i wish that i didn't drink regularly and then just once every three months i got 
shit faced. Yeah. That's how I wish I drank. Like, like as if I was drinking ayahuasca or something mm. like that. <laughs> you know, just like yeah. absolutely on the floor <laughs> with a <the> bucket, <laughs> feeling all of the like void and everything. Instead, I just kind of. I just kind of like slowly walked my way into a void <laughs> over. Like, it's over in your blood. It's in the Irish blood. You can't help it. You've got to. You've got to have at least some of that alcohol going in. And whatever was, so I. So it was funny because I was like, "All right, I'm gonna bring it today. I'm gonna bring in. I'm gonna bring like dark Shane into mind under my. I woke up. I was like, I don't want to live anymore. This is great. We'll talk about that. <laughs> oh, today's and episode? Then like, yeah, today's oh, cool. episode. And then I was like, and I haven't felt like existing for like three days. Just not, that's not a long time, really. But it's been three days. And then, uh, and then I just kind of like, once I got excited to talk about that i was like oh, i'm in a good mood now yeah. <laughs> kind, of, kind of kind of ruined it. it went away and like i don't but well you it, are a you are a performer like you have that like as one of, it's not all you are but it's one of the things that i think you need to do even if you didn't want to you like have that mm. uh that bug or whatever so you're you're not having that meet need met um i don't know if you have any ladies in the life right now you're no. in a in a town you don't care that much about except for the pickleball and stuff. <laughs> Most of what goes on in the town you're probably not terribly no. interested in. So it's do you think it's mostly like we've both talked about the just depressive tendencies in general, but it's probably being brought out more by the current uh the current climate. Well, you know, I can't put my finger on it exactly. And I don't know if what I am putting my finger on is reality or just interesting thoughts that I'm attaching myself to. But there's a few things, which is I think that things are starting as things are starting to normalize a little bit. I've talked with a couple friends. I saw like Doug Stanhope tweeted that he was like in going through a little spell. And I was like, I feel like I'm talking with a lot of people that are like mm. going through a spell, which is odd because things are, looking brighter and summer's right around the corner and like things are just definitely getting better i wish i wish they're getting better faster i get frustrated that like i i wish 90 percent of people would get vaccinated and we didn't have to think about this anymore and the reality is that that's probably not going to happen but but Which I'll to all you listeners who are afraid of getting it, me and Shane have both gotten our, our second dose, and it's nothing. I got, yeah. I was drowsy for the next day, but I was kind of euphoric about the drowsiness. It was kind of fun, and it's a great excuse to, you know, any commitment you have, you can be like, "Sorry, the second vax just like hit me after yeah. like two days and <laughs> knocked me out a little longer than I wanted to." Sorry, I missed your daughter's funeral. And there, there was, there's also the idea that people are so worried about long-term, you know, of course, you know, I, I, I will, uh, egg on my face if 10 years from now, everyone that took the vaccine just kills over because of some unforeseen thing, but you would need to like the, the mech, like people are like, oh, you don't know what it's going to, well, but there's no mechanism in place that would make something like that happen. Like, I can't tell you for certain that I'm not going to turn into a giraffe tomorrow, but I can for tell free? you that there's like Imagine if we got lost. turned into giraffes for free and then got upset about it. We would not deserve <laughs> to live if we got to be a giraffe for free. <laughs> Uh, you just wake up like, God, why does my neck feel so <laughs> long today? Why is my head hovering two stories above where my room normally is? <laughs> why am I no longer attracted to human women and can only think about giraffe pussy? <laughs> why, why are these thoughts? I better find a mirror somewhere. I have a, I have a theory. <laughs> You see other giraffe heads poking out of the the roofs. That's how the next 
evolution of huma- humanity started. And then it becomes a class war between the people that were born giraffes and the people that became giraffes because of the Moderna second dose. It would, I think it would be a relief if, like, because if you were a giraffe and you look in the mirror, find out you're a giraffe, like, you're going to be like, God, how am I going to explain this to people? And then you go outside and you see everyone's a giraffe. You're like, oh, whew, we're all... We're all giraffes. What a specific okay. type of relief that would be. Like you're like, well, it's not as bad as I thought. Well, at least I have. We're gonna. Someone is on it. Someone's definitely on it already. I don't have to fix this. It's not going to get fixed, or someone else will fix it. But I don't have to worry about this giraffeness. I'm gonna enjoy it. Because um, I, I, I guess I, I do need to have some um, vaccine people back on the show but it's like it's uh, the the mrna especially is just giving it's just giving you, you have you have the same you've had the same dna for like seventy five thousand years that your ancestors had for the most part and and that immune system is is built to be really flexible so you create antibodies for what is in the particular environment that you find yourself in 75,000 years from now uh, 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 years ago was very different than time is now and so every single day you're creating antibody your immune system is always creating antibodies and guessing at what might be out there and what might be a threat and all that it's doing is being like here's the cheat sheet here just make this antibody rather than the other random antibodies that mm. you were that you were making anyway so why in the world would that lead to some long term cuz you can have short like people can like if something goes wrong you know it. like every vaccine in history when something when the one in a million person has the side effect it happens like either right then and there or within like two months is the longest so why they make and they've you been wait. testing this vaccine for for over a year now so it's like the again like the logic of like well what would happen and and then like covid does have long term effects that we know of that we discover more of all the time so there's there's just no logical argument to not get a vaccine and no and it's so, pure it's pure i mean fear based on like you know it's a needle and it's got the yeah. word mrna and bill gates is behind it and the new world yeah. order and it's patent number 666 which that it, might not even be true i just saw something that was patent 60606 and they think it's the mark of the beast by getting the um, yeah and they're like vaccine. oh vaccine companies aren't held liable and it's like well that's actually a really peculiar kind of law that you dug up uh to to say and, and i'm no like i'm no some like big pharma promoter but what i mean what are our options here what are you going to get your vaccine from like your neighbor's homebrew vaccine <laughs> please like, do that please do get that yeah uh, I mean, and i know that i mean uh, with any type of argument i i recognize that probably the best anti-vax debater or maybe even the top 10 they could probably take us both on even if we were like prepared well, with that's google and exactly stuff. Exactly. That well, that's what happens. Is they're like, here's here's some like autistic, brilliant scientist who's never been on camera before and is nervous, and we're going to pit them against Russell Brand's <laughs> glistening fucking chest oil and just unstoppable charisma <laughs> and, and and like and who's going to think who won the argument people are going to think russell brand knows more about vaccines and and like won that debate that's oh what i haven't even seen that is that just an example or was he was that's, he taking that's just on? A, that's just a ridiculous example oh, okay no because i don't think is, russell is, brand is anti but i haven't checked in on our old mate russell in a while um just kind of uh, makes me get a little <laughs> Mate, do you have anything but, to drink or smoke <laughs> the, the idea is, is is you know 
verbally verbally fluent people are, are very convincing. Yeah, and, and whether, debate is a skill. Like people can yeah. debate like that. I don't even exist. If you're if you get like a really good even high school debater that knows debate and to structure arguments and this therefore that and that, I'd be like, oh, you're right. I don't exist. You got yeah, me. yeah. Meanwhile, it, I'm still here existing, and I have to live with that. That's why there's always the that's that's how you know someone gets OJ um out of uh out of jail you know there's great lawyers and everything oh, else yeah. you, make, you make great arguments and like with the if it is a big conspiracy to kill everything pardon me if I've said it already but it's it's either it's not a big conspiracy to take down humanity or it's such a big one that you're you're just not gonna win so just enjoy getting getting microchipped because there's it's if, if it's that big you've got no shot and if it's that big i kind of trust that they've worked out the numbers yeah. <laughs> you know if they're that good at it like oh they must know something i don't uh <laughs> yeah uh yeah there there is uh there, there is a weird thing happening with like the intellectual dark web where they're uh, they're they're trying to jump on that train. I've seen the word like anti-natalists get tossed around because they're trying to mean? they're trying to like it's like a fancy way of saying pro or pro life or anti-natal like natal or natal vitamins. It, like anti babies, basically. Oh, anti babies um, is what pro choice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you're like for abortion, you're like against children. It's like a fancy way of. Oh, they're trying to make anti vax like sound ridiculous or something. Yeah. And well, that's for for abortion arguments. They'll okay. say anti natalist. So they'll, they'll say like everyone's uh, uh, the the idea. There's a lot of pushback on the idea of overpopulation. Um, now coming from, because, because I think the right is more, is more like every life. Yay. Let's have, let's keep on having babies as much as possible. And it's a celebration. It's like, everyone's having baby. Like there's no, we're good. Like we don't need to throw a parade every time, but, uh, but, but the, uh, the, intellectual dark web has been like jumping on that train a little bit too they're basically like taking every republican position and be like how do you make this like really smart oh yeah they yeah. can't they can't yeah. do it themselves to save their lives uh, yeah um and then and then people attach to it and they get a bunch of followers but yeah what's been going on with clubhouse like i've been hearing from not just you but other people about how well i i was overhyped on it and yeah it's kind of over now like what happened that makes it feel over uh, i never i could never listen to one of those stupid little i hate everything about it i hate the layout i hate the way the sound sounds i hate the people that are on it i hate the name i think i already said that um yeah I, I think, what happened to it i i don't know i'm i don't have my finger on the pulse and i haven't been on since the beginning i think i just saw like i think i saw a couple people including tim Dillon, was one that was like i got taken it's by done. clubhouse clubhouse is done and, it's and, not good <laughs> it's real bad it's real bad uh, I mean, it was one of those things where I was like, well, the whole thing is not letting people in. You're building a line outside of a nightclub mm -hmm. to make it look more popular than it actually is. And when you get inside, you realize, oh, I don't like nightclubs. Yep. Um, and and I just wanted to be in on an exclusive thing. It's triggering scarcity and everything. And then there's like this social kind of validation and the cool thing. And and then if you get inside and there's no substance there, then like, eh, I remember on Anthony Bourdain's show, he was instructing these people to start their pizza restaurant. He was like, here's what you should do instead. Say you get the dough imported from Italy, uh, only make a certain number of pizzas every day. And then when you sell out, you're closed and only have yeah. one cashier work in the booth or something like so the same thing with restaurants like build. Build a line that's not so big that scares people away, but just big enough that people think this is where it's at. And yeah. then sell out quick and then boom. I think it's uh, Franklin's Barbecue. and uh, Oh, in... yeah. Aaron Franklin teaches barbecue on Masterclass. Really? Yeah, he's got a Masterclass. 
Aaron, yeah, Aaron Franklin. That's the dude's name because it's Franklin's Barbecue. Ah. That's, yeah, it's really good barbecue, but the line thing is really tough. I mean, Do only, you did it? I've only gotten it from other people waiting in line and then they brought it over and then I got to have it. I'm like, oh, this is really good barbecue. But if you have to get up at five in the morning, wait in the line and you don't even get to choose what you get and then they call your mom a cunt and then they say that <laughs> you're, you're stupid and then you have to pay double what it says on the menu i don't like any of that i'd rather just go to rudy's and then watch a movie and then still have yeah my two hours. so franklin barbecue is for the listeners it's in austin and is like every year running they uh they're considered the best barbecue um in the world there's things like this like there's this place in cape cod that's considered the best clam chowder and you go and you're like clam ch like how do you make clam chowder so much better that it's like the michael jordan <laughs> of clam chowder and other people haven't just copied that how do you do it and then you have it and you're like whoa this is amazing clam chowder that Whatever. extra level Whatever that extra level did. in food where you, you can't remember it, right? Like, because some food you can, like, <laughs> I can play this in my head and, like, it's pretty much the same as if I ate it. Yeah, it's all right. But then there's some, it's like another thing happens that just, like, unlocks something. In your yeah. Head. So I, w I was in, I lived in Austin for two years and I had heard about Franklin Bar. And I was never, I was dating someone at the time. So I was never going to lug someone else in that line with me because I read that the line's like two hours. It's only open for, and, and it's not even fabricated. They just only have so many barbecue pits and their thing is like a 12 hour process. So they can literally only make so much. They've oh, yeah. tried adding on and stuff. They are the best. But, but uh, and, and so one day I was visiting, I think I was doing a show at Cap City or something. I was in town and I had the day free and I was by myself and I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm doing the experience. Uh, and uh, I don't have anyone with me to like, worry about uh, you know what i like about being by myself same with tripping by myself is that i worry so much about everyone else having a yeah, good time that's the first weight that was lifted off me during um during a a dmt with with you actually uh, yeah. i mean it was a separate trip because you don't go in it's not like a ride where we both get in but you know uh well while you were over and i remember just the the feeling of you have been caring so much in every moment about like <laughs> are they is, are they okay are you behaving correctly are they having all right time are they mad at you for this kind of thing and you can you can just release it like your your suitcases and it was it's it's tough yeah. to articulate but i'm probably still holding on to some of it now because that's just what happens if you don't d deal with it but yeah well, you can go so much deeper because if you have to, if you have to care for other people, if you have to, ha or if you have to have the idea of what if my house starts on fire and I need to run, uh, will I be, if, if any even flash of an idea like that happens during the trip, it pulls you out of it. And, and the, the more experience you get, the more of just letting go to me, I always just imagined just um uh, astronaut like tethered um to the outside of the ship and just releasing that and just drifting yeah. off into space that's what you're that's what you're aiming for and it's impossible to do perfectly you're always going to go all right wait a second why am i here okay i took a drug i'm a human being i'm on a couch right now but the the less you can do that the more you can detach from that and just be in the experience, yeah. um, the better. And so that was my trip to Franklin's and it was, uh, it was a wonderful journey because I had, um, I had, I, I, I get in and they put, they put a sign on someone that says last man standing, um, uh, for when like, the, this is this is our estimation of the last person that will be served. Oh, so where was it on your line? It was five people ahead of me. Oh, and no. they're like, sometimes it's like sometimes we have more, and so, and I was like, I don't care. I'm not here 
necessarily to like fill my stomach. I'm here for the experience of, uh, of and people are, so immediately when that happened, there was just lots of drama where I was. And it was so entertaining because it was, everyone was like, oh, do we leave? Do we chance it? Oh, let's, well, let's wait and see how it goes. I think it was, actually, I think it started just like two before me. Mm. And then it started moving up. As as the place opened and as people were ordering, they're like, yeah, someone just ordered 30 pounds. Uh, they don't limit how much you can buy. You can just get 30 pounds uh, you of could whatever. Scalp you could just thing. scalp the whole thing. And and so they would come and they'd move it further in front and it's getting further away and people are like freaking out around me. Like this is so entertaining. They're gonna ambush the guy walking out of there with six bags of barbecue because you know who did it. <laughs> and, and as it's now we're we're not even inside yet, we're still outside. And as we get closer, there's there's like now they start saying the things that they're out of. So they're like, we're out of pulled pork. And I was oh. like, oh! <laughs> it was a whole, like every time they'd announce a thing that they're out of, like it was a, everyone, <laughs> it was so entertaining. So br brisket, pulled pork, and uh, <laughs> sausage probably gone, ribs probably gone. And then by the time you get there, it's probably what the the turkey or something i i promise you that there's there's there was people in those lines that like reacted less dramatically to someone close to them dying <laughs> in their life and when they're like we're out of ribs no because <laughs> they've been waiting for two hours and and now they're out and they're and they're like we're we're we have like some scraps now so I was like well can we get like a a side or is there like coleslaw <laughs> or anything like you are here for the coleslaw I just stayed because I thought it was hilarious you I just want I, a plastic I, fork I knew I knew I wasn't getting food I knew I wasn't eating there I already looked up places and like had a plan to go somewhere else but there was it was whenever because we got inside and we got kind of close and there was this woman that was like really losing it and and <laughs> and whenever they announced that the last meat thing <laughs> was gone she just started bawling <laughs> Bawling. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. That's so much better this is, than food. That is so much better than food. A show, a good show. How often do you see a great oh, show? It was an incredible, memorable show. And um, somewhere so, yeah, should market itself as like the second best barbecue. <laughs> so it's like when Rudy's gone, we are the place. We're always gonna pick up your booty call. We make mm -hmm. up in, for what we lack in the quality with enthusiasm. Uh, we have multiple <laughs> cashiers. You don't know the name of the dude that started it. We don't wear glasses, etc. <laughs> did I did I talk about the did I talk about the pate thing on the pate here, thing or was on that Duncan just on Duncan on yeah. Duncan? So listen to Shane on Duncan <laughs> Trussell Family Hour. Uh, it was the last episode posted last week, I think. But um, yeah, do you want to give a quick summary of it for people that didn't it was, hear that? It was basi basically uh, your taste is not just your tongue. There's so many other. It's the smell. It's the eyes. There's everything goes in into it. And so it's uh, the the pate study was they turned dog food into something that looked like pate, and they had people that were foodies like rate which ones were better or whatever, and the dog food rated just as high as the pate yeah the, like real pate and the thing that uh you were saying in your story is that since you're such an adventurous eater i've witnessed this firsthand many times where <laughs> we're like ordering delivery and you're like hmm chicken giblets I'm like what are those and you're like i don't know i'm an adventurous eater i want to try it out and then you're like these are all right i would have enjoyed something else but i'm glad i i added it to yeah. my bird watch list so 
you were saying on Duncan's show that you wanted to like pate because it's like a very civilized, like highbrow thing or something. And you're like, I want to develop a taste for it. And you spent what, seven, eight years developing a taste for it. And then you stumble upon this article that newsflash food experts cannot tell difference between dog food and pate in double blind studies. And you're like, no, I've wasted so much. But it's so much of the experience of living and life is influenced by all these external factors that you don't uh, and you're like "Ooh, this tastes good or this thing looks good there's all these other factors and you mentioned like the waiter having a better attitude or more enthusiasm or whatever that's what the line was and that's what that's what the line was with clubhouse too people got in and like yeah okay we're into this all right this is what yeah let's talk about real estate in here. <laughs> it's just brimming with with con men yeah um, lots of what crypto real estate uh selling ebooks networking networking is just gross in general uh, uh dave wait um my friend dave wait just has a card a bit his b business card just says dave wait networking networking uh, <laughs> yeah uh, yeah getting out there uh, uh, <laughs> um but uh yeah uh, so i don't oh man i'm having a little trouble finding my way back but it was but it's about memory and not with, being able to find it right so well well this started with well we're abandoning the memory episode because this started with why i've been in in such a low mood and trying to put my finger on it. And I think there's something with there's, there's, there was like the grief and the loss and the denial and everything that happened at the start of COVID. Mm. And then there's been like the restructuring and now there's like some aspects of grief and loss going back into a, Oh, I kind of got used to not touring or, you know, I kind of got used to like, I, I, I discovered all these blind spots in my career and I'm really actually loving this book that I'm writing and this new podcast that I'm doing. And there's lots of people in that position that are now like, Oh, uh, I was so worried at the beginning of this about losing my cubicle job and now I'm realizing, oh no, I got to go back into my cubicle job. But do you? I, you don't though. I I don't, but like going on the road is still really complicated and I'm not interested for a while. I want us to I want us to do a tour starting like next March or like the like when we've been doing this for a year. Oh um, yeah, hopefully. Th that would be a good that would be really good timing. So I'm I'm kind of trying to put together. I'm basically putting I'm going to be um toward the end of the month I'm just going to be putting holds under uh at venues for like you know, a few months or whatever uh tour next year that I can just use for whatever if I end up doing stand up science, if Does I end that up, cost if money? We, if we Does do. that cost a deposit or something? No, if you hold it. But but it costs time and energy. So I haven't I haven't wanted to book anything that I wanna that I'd need to like move or whatever else. Cause then I I book a tour and then before the tour goes off, then I gotta line up podcasts to do and everything else to promote. And, uh, and so it's a whole thing. So I, th I think that there's, the point is, I think that there was like something with that of, I can't remember. I was talking with Duncan actually off the, off the air. Um, not aren't the best podcasts ago. off air, yeah. the best, like when you really start to talk shit and, uh, like actually be real. It's like when you stop recording, like, Oh, you know who sucks? Friend. Sometimes, and then, but sometimes hitting the record is like unlocks a thing in my brain. I'm like, ooh, I'm on now. Oh, yeah. No, the real episode is better. You're right. But there's something special about the, oh, no one even got to hear this part. Yeah, yeah. But this is Duncan. I was talking to Duncan about how, I, and I've said this on Here We Are about how I, there's like lots of aspects about COVID that I've enjoyed, which is that it, gets people it like 
shook people up and got people like thinking in different ways and reappraising their lives and 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 um and he was saying something about how i guess there's a oh what's what's that um oh apocalypse now that's what he was saying he was like you're like that guy in apocalypse now it was like one day i'm gonna have to uh uh, uh, come to terms with this war might be over. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real uh, thought. That's like a lot of people probably don't want the war to end. They're very comfortable there. Yeah. I mean, I try to check myself to make sure that that's not part of what's priming my, um, view of things. Cause I don't think, I don't think having one third of people fully vaccinated when that's, the one third of people that were the most eager to get vaccinated. I don't, to me, that doesn't feel like things are over. Yeah. <laughs> I know? wanted it to be all or nothing, which I know this is impossible to actually pull off, but I wish we had shut down for real, for real for six mm -hmm. weeks. Like no, no, even phone call people, even though that doesn't make any <laughs> sense, but just for real shut down and then actually open it back up. But yeah. we've just been this, a half pregnant thing that we've done the whole year has been really annoying and then yeah. opening up there isn't a big like grand opening welcome and then you know you see the old photo of the navy guy kissing the girl in the middle of times square that famous photo the war is over like there's no moment of that it's just kind of like you can see your friends now masked but you don't need a mask but you need a mask but you also need two masks and you need a not, you don't need a mask outside but you should still wear one and yeah, I don't, I don't want to wear a mask. It's for for pussies. Well, I'm not a pussy. I lift a hundred pounds over my head, and then I fuck pussies. I, I better not be a highlight. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing "Hey Jude," so it's not a highlight. Hey First off, Jude, a hundred pounds over your head. I guess that's a. I guess that's a decent. <laughs> You could have exaggerated a little more with that character, so I feel like. <laughs> Just machismo is kind of funny now that, now that it's over a little bit. Or it's it's definitely had a dip. The franchise has suffered a lot because ma Macho Man were it. And then we kind of went through this beta male phase of Michael Sarah and the, the macho guy kind of got annoying after that. We liked the more... Uh, yeah, nerdy, yeah. awkward guy, and now it's like not even that. Now it's the fluidity thing of like you're a you're a they them. You're the we want to completely rework the the stiff, rigid boundary of woman kitchen man with suitcase cheating on his wife with uh, a <laughs> bottle of Jack Daniels in his hand uh, <laughs> paradigm. And that's a better way to be, of course. But it it is funny that now it's like macho in general is just a a funny thing. Well, this was, this was the, one of the things that kind of, uh, I, one, I think part of my low mood was just one getting hangovers because alcohol, alcohol is a stimulant until you stop drinking and then it becomes a depressant. Oh, and so, I always thought it was just depressant. No, it's a stimulant. So as long as you keep drinking, like, but it, it is yeah. technically a stimulant at first. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. And then, um, cause I thought and, it was a depressant and the reason you felt good was that it depressed the part of you that keeps you depressed. The inhibitions. Yeah. Mm. Um, no, I think it's, I think it's one of those where it has the, I forget the, still don't even know what a barbiturate is and I'm not going to learn. <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's some drugs that have like, you know, dosage. Uh, they do completely different things depending on the dosage or the context and alcohol is, is one of those. But then it was also when I went to give blood and there was like no one in there and which I think it's just because it was like the red cross and they don't pay. That's not to say that like, there's not plenty of people like getting paid to get so great, like whatever you probably should get paid to go and do plasma or whatever. But I was thinking I like, almost made a social post about like oh this is really easy to do and it's like fun and it's nice you do it's something that i never think of and thus i they give give me a call and i'm like oh sure i'll donate um blood but i don't think to so i was like i'll make a post because like a lot of people would like to it would help and they don't think to and, I, and then i was and then i thought oh i don't want someone like 
accusing me of virtue signaling or something like that. And I was like, how fucking pathetic is that? That there's like virtue shaming yeah. happening. Which Duncan said it also on the podcast yeah. y'all just did, but virtue signaling, shame for shaming virtue signaling is another virtue signaling. It's just yeah. coming from another angle and then you can virtue sh signal shame that guy but there's always going to be these little shitty comments uh, yeah yeah so uh, that's just a fact but and then and then something it went from that to like just that nothing is ever going to work out or then and then it's all too much to do and then it was like nothing matters anyway. <laughs> it was just a spiraled so quickly. And and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's COVID or living with my parents who are getting older and older and Ooh. seeing like more of their wrinkles all the time. <laughs> but there's something about there's something about like mortality that I I think about I think about being especially since I turned 40 last year. I think about being an old person a lot, a lot more than I did before I turned. I think before I turned 40, I was like dying young. Woo. And then I turned 40. I'm like, ah, uh, who am I kidding? I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to live another 40 years. You got to accept that. And that comes along with lots of responsibility because there's a freedom and there's a freedom and just like, oh, I could just end this anytime. I can just jump off this. There's always the escape hatch. Yeah. For this <laughs> incarnation. But I don't know if, if you think you're escaping existence at like as a as an awareness, not just as this avatar. I think you're going to be pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised. Yeah, maybe. I don't think there is getting out of this uh, being a something. There's just no way you can be a nothing. That seat's taken. <laughs> that seat's taken. Yeah, and you're like, even if it's like, well, you've reincarnated after, you know, a future civilization has gone, taken DNA or something and reanimated you based on footage that they found, um, whether it's that realist angle or whether it's just the pure soul angle of mm -hmm. like you are now in the big blue ball of light that Jessa Reed went to when she OD'd on meth and then was given an assignment to come back and help humanity if she wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um have you have you talked to near death experienced people at all? No. Like researchers? Like, yeah. Who just no, study I, it, who don't have I, like a conclusion, but they're just like, here's the consistent things that happens when the bread is uh, not the bread, when the brain is in the death state. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, I had I had one myself and it was I thought it was like it was very similar to a DMT experience. In fact, I thought I was just on a DMT trip and then I was like, "Wait, I didn't smoke DMT." <laughs> <gasps> oh no, I'm dying. <laughs> perhaps you're really dead this time. <laughs> and perhaps there is no dying, but you come back again and again and again. And then you realize I'm always just here and now. Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts on that, but none this of This incarnation them... is done for sure. There's no getting out alive of these incarnations and memory will also be gone because you don't keep your memory across incarnations rather than... I mean, Maybe you keep it in a deep, deep subconscious, inaccessible hard drive that this one can't reach it to, but... Um, I don't know. Just it's it's anything but nothing. I don't know what it is after this, but it's anything but nothing. Nothing is just off the table. Well, to me, I just think that what we think is something is usually our conscious interpretation and of of everything, and we're all in this kind of universe or multiverse of our own perception and i do believe that our consciousness that we're experiencing now ends mm -hmm. i don't think that and and then i think that i just had a i had an episode uh, it hasn't come out yet but it was about um uh someone has a uh it's it's affectionately called the body farm where they just have um 
you donate your body when you die to this place and then they just research what happens to a decomposing body to like oh, soil that would have been such like a that. funny grant to write like everyone else is like testing medicine and surgical techniques they're like my here's my pitch throw you out in the dirt <laughs> And do jack shit. <laughs> give me, <laughs> see give what me, happens. Yeah, give me a hundred grand to buy this little plot of forest land. Uh, yeah, I mean they. Well, they learn a lot about, um, for example, like how sur- soil is fertilized and things like that naturally, and and uh, the d- different things that they can do because stuff is always dying and keeling over on the ground and then becoming fertilizer, and it's. It's this amazing, there is, your immune system is keeping like all the life in your intestines in check. And then when you die, your immune system shuts down. And then that life in your intestine is like, let's party. (laughs) And then you just start bloating and then it spills out everywhere and starts eating everything. And then, and then like, that's just your insides start teeming with life. And then you're not even there for that. Insects just get into all of your holes just all every just finds orifices and then they just start breeding and and they're just like bang there's just like maggots banging in your eyeballs and stuff and it's kind of beautiful um i want the obi-wan kenobi death where the darth saber the dark the darth vader lightsaber just uh cuts through him and he just disappears Uh, uh, Oh really? I you don't think... remember that where his his robe just falls down? Oh yeah, I I remember that, but I'm I'm surprised that that's what you want your death to be. I always thought I was a cremation guy, and now I feel like I want I want to. I guess in Portland they legalized some right to choose your burial or something. Basically, you can go and and be like. They just stick you in some organic sack and throw you out in a field and then just like whatever has at you. And I kind of, I think I want that one. Oh, that's there's cool. something, well, there's something about like becoming more life and yeah. like feeding a thing. And I don't know, there's something, there's something pretty, in, I mean, it's dark. I know people don't like thinking about maggots crawling out of their eyeballs, but I like thinking about that. And I think that there's something <laughs> really interesting and beautiful. Has anyone ever said something to the effect of life doesn't end, it just eats itself? Ooh, I like that. Let's write that one down. It's it's very similar to what Neil deGrasse Tyson said when he was asked about death. And he doesn't touch on the um, spiritual or whatever aspects of it. You know, he's always going to go the material science route, but he's like, uh, when you die, you release a lot of heat and that heat dissipates into blah, 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 blah. When I die, don't cremate me. Put me in the ground and let <laughs> the earth eat me and absorb my heat and redistribute. And then he goes off on this whole rant, uh, rant of like he wants the stored potential energy of his body to convert out and not just be wasted. Like if you fell into a volcano, who cares? But if you fed this little area with your your body energy, then it's a whole system that it, it's it's if you if a corpse shows up it uh, on on the ground, it's just like everything around there just hit the lottery. It, it's just because I was confused. I was like, how did how's even something evolved to like it's such a chance event for a corpse to just plop in your area. <laughs> oh yeah, the magic hummingbird feeder like amount of nutrients. <laughs> exactly. Like how are you even ready to indulge we're, in all that? And we're just giving it back too. I mean, we borrowed all of this stuff. Like I came here for free. Like you yeah. you just kind of became uh an awareness, uh, a little little energy ball that's like controlling this vessel but all of the atoms in my body have just been like i've just been attracting them from food and from whatever the air and then eventually i have to drop it and give it back to the earth yeah 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 that's a that's an interesting i i have a hard time naturally uh like but these are both rentals isn't that funny we're both in rentals Yeah, I mean, and and then it's you're not the same person you 
Theseus's today ship that you were yesterday. The Theseus's ship is that how you say it? You know the Theseus ship. No, uh, what's that? That's the um the mythological ship where the the front breaks off and the sail breaks. Basically, every component of the ship at one point during the journey breaks, and they have to replace it. And by the time the ship gets to its destination, it's a completely different uh, uh, like ship. It's got yeah. different wood, different cloth that made the sails, but it's still called Theseus's ship. And you're like, is it really still his ship if all the original components are gone? And then our bodies yeah. are also that, and that none of the same atoms are here from seven years ago oh man you're gonna like the book sapiens when you get around to it oh i've read um, sapiens oh you have oh yeah i've got the animated one too or not animated sorry the oh, illustrated th- one yeah because we talked about it I, I i didn't know that you actually read it i've got homo deus what? i've got homo uh s- no i've got what is the second one it's not a homo book it's like 21 21- I, I gave up homo books after that i only read uh, yeah 21 <laughs> lessons for the 21st century <laughs> I was I was thinking that it would be fun to do some sort of I I, I think that if we had I I don't know if we'll have theme shows or whatever but it would be fun to go on a death some sort of like exploration of death um tour or something like that at some point since you have your book and yeah. you have like your molecules joke is one of my favorites. Um, and at the but, end of the, every show, one audience member will die yeah. and they would sign a waiver. So it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know that that would be fun to put together. It, it'd be, it's a little hard to market dark things sometimes, or just like, exploring the abyss or yeah. pointlessness of and things. And we're medium about it here. There's like, uh, so Mexico is very cool with the skulls and death imagery and they have like better death rituals. Not that I'm that familiar with it besides watching Coco, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, they've got the painted skulls and Dia de los Muertos. We don't really have that. We're like, they passed, I like that. They passed away and they're, they're no longer, just we're all like weird about it. And then I think China is also like us, but even worse, where they're like not down with skull images and stuff like that. I know this because mm. I I have an agent in China that does my social media stuff for China, and they're like, yeah, they're they're not as hip to the death stuff, and also not as cool with the sex stuff either. You got to tone that back a little bit. Really? Yeah. Not not saying I should tone back anything, just in terms of what they choose to post and not yeah, post. Yeah. I'm like, oh, interesting. So you I, well, I didn't. So you have? Is it is it like a different platform? Yeah, I don't even something? know what it's called. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't really control it. Like I just give my art to them, and then they because I'm not allowed to have a Chinese social media, and I wasn't gonna do it until oh, wow. I saw so many places stealing my stuff and selling it on shirts and these Chinese companies, and I had no real legal action for it and then it kind of came across that I had a opportunity to get this agent and they liked me and I'm like oh cool now I can have someone represent me instead of having them steal there and then they kind of take care of all the Chinese illegal stuff. stuff and and also China is the new superpower like it is going to be the head if not already the head dog it is going to be known as the head dog in the next five ten years probably and I feel like I should I right. should have something to do with it I should I should be nice to the CCP. Yeah, I should, yeah. I should say that yeah. what they do is good no matter what. Yeah, you should definitely um, say. I just don't want to disappear. That I, that's all I want. I know I said I want to be cut down and disappear, but that's at the end of my life. I don't want to disappear and then be in a cell somewhere for some reason. But I also want to be entertaining. So it's like, it's this weird thing of like, how do I become. How do I be entertaining and not cross lines that are crass or get me in trouble? And then how do I not be bland either? It's like a very delicate balance. Mm. <laughs> I I don't I don't know much about uh, uh, China. Uh, how about China? I know that's that the one like... thing I miss about Trump is just the way he said China. <laughs> Everything else I don't care about, but that was the one thing I miss. <laughs> 
<laughs> with such emphasis. Ch- China. I can't even do it right. Yeah, it's like imagine if really... Obama had called it the Chinese virus. Yeah. Uh, why would they? Who would say such a thing? Only Donald Trump. Yeah. Quite a character. So uh, wild. We did four years of that, we're, and we're still just kind of here. And we're like, that was that was interesting. That well, that was kind of. I, I think that's another thing that's going on of the adrenaline dump of not every day. Just like, what is the? What does the news look like? today uh, what no way how yeah. could it it got crazier again uh, crazy keeps out doing itself <laughs> it's it's amazing how how does crazy keep upping itself like no way it, that's that's it can't get any more. Tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and and there's no it's gonna be hack. Crazy's gonna <laughs> be hack. And nope, crazy did it again. Just yep. like every four day, four years running. And now like Biden, I don't follow the news anyway. No and so I only go on Twitter and I'll see like a couple things here and there. I only talk with scientists, so I get stuff through like you know, I, my filters are different. And and so as far as I can tell, Biden's doing a better job than anyone would have imagined him him doing. I Again, like, no, there's no need, listeners, to, like, call me out on this because I'm not saying that I actually know this is just what my sense of feeling of, of how things might be going. I'll, I'll push back just so that they don't have to call you out. No, he's not. What about the the free trade agreement, uh, the seven twenty six free trade agreement that he signed knowingly, knowingly he signed the tr- that trade agreement, which you think you care about racism and indigenous people? That's going to kill more indigenous race people than than anyone than Christopher Columbus multiplied by Benito Mussolini, and that was signed by Biden this weekend, and Kamala Harris laughed about it. She laughed, but Trump, Trump passed legislation to give those people homes and then biden took them he took them away for himself sometimes i have your voice <laughs> pop into my head just randomly through the day of when you did the impression of whoever that uh character is of 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 uh of like correcting liberal hypocrisy character yeah guy the, uh, you did it in one of the first episodes talking about talking about obama droning children yeah and he's for his own pleasure and i have that voice pop into my head he did it for his own pleasure and, and you then, like you held the syllables like unnaturally long it was like this perfect like it's such a it's such a creepy word too to pleasure uh, like, uh, yeah like for the pleasure <laughs> there's like this there can be such a darkness to it and, and he well. did it and he adjusted his turban and his eyes glowed red <laughs> like on those anti Obama signs you see at a gun show. <laughs> They are always at gun shows. It's it's uh with that ugly yellow and red font. I I had a joke that I did for a while. There was a period of time and I only did this like twice at open mics, but there was this period of time that I was doing I was super suicidal. It was when I just moved to Portland and man, I was in a real I was in a pretty dark place. And Portland's a great place to be depressed at. Um, and and because you're not expected to do anything, I, I there's no that, adults I, to check on you. Just that you can be very open about it. And, oh, yeah. and they're like, yeah, me too. Um, and and there was uh, there was something. What happened? Oh, oh yeah. So so I just went through a period of time. When I was just doing like nothing but very, very dark and like lots of suicide jokes and stuff. And and I noticed that like after 15 minutes, 
people would start looking around because I because I knew the jokes were technically funny. Like definitely this is absolutely funny. But then there's a look of just like, oh, do we do we help this person? Like <laughs> like a feeling of like they knew it was real. You Ooh, know? They sensed and, it. Uh, yeah. And one of the I wrote this fantastic um uh, stuff about uh, about crossfit and stuff that's on I, I did this epics uh like short special thing that it's on there if people want to check it out so it's really fantastic dark material that like really made it as a, like a mainstay into my act but in the time of generating that there was this one bit that i that didn't make the cut and it was about thinking of the various ways um, to kill yourself. And I once had the thought that was like, um, was like, oh, I, I think that the car in the garage, uh, the carbon monoxide starting the engine up, that's like a really pleasant way to go. And then I was like, oh my God, I don't even, I don't have a car or a garage. I can't, <laughs> I can't afford a car or a garage to kill myself. What a privileged in. way of suicide. Like you have a car and a garage and you're going to use it to kill yourself instead of drive to wherever and do whatever you want. Like, like remember the, the story? Saw that. Like, oh, what do you do? You have a... You have a like a king from the 1500s. Like, yeah. Wow, you have this this mechanical chariot and an extra house just for your chariot. What kind of royal? What do you use that for? Oh, I use that to kill. Do you myself. remember that story of the guy that? I mean, it's probably more than just one guy, but he's like very suicidal and then decides to go out and get really wasted and coked up and gets like eleven hookers or something. And then afterwards, surprise, doesn't want to kill himself. He just had to. <laughs> he just had to live it up a little bit. Just had to get wild and loose. And yeah. Uh, you know, same with stories of cancer going into remission, which that's not science, of course, but those are just some fun uh, anecdotes. Speaking of which, I like to, I haven't done it in a while, but I like listening to channelers on YouTube who channel the dead. And when they've mm. channeled people like Chris Cornell, Anthony Bourdain, Robin Williams, Kate Spade, people that hung themselves, uh, it's fun hearing their their take or not their take their channeling of that person describing what it's like immediately afterwards like waking up in a cold room and your feet touch the floor and it's kind of cold and you don't have to do anything and it's a weird feeling like it's a sunday and but the sunday doesn't end and they could just be making it up of course but it's a fun experiment of imagining that you think you're killing yourself and being released of your unis that is causing you so much trouble because the world's not causing you trouble you're causing you trouble with your thought loops and your not good enoughness and your why am i this happy why am i happier than i was two weeks ago i thought i could reach that happiness i did the same thing i did but it's not doing it anymore it's all entropy Entropy's going to eat me up Ugh, i'll just beat entropy to the punch and just get, end it now uh, mm. And then you just kind of you do that and then you're still exactly the same you awareness just you don't have a body anymore You're just well. Why is that awareness still here? I can't explain it I also don't have any body to ex to research explaining it. I just I'm this mm. isness still Kind of like when you mm. move to a new city and you think you're mo moving away from yourself And once you get to the new city, you're like fuck. I'm still here Same bullshit me. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doing it. The call is coming from inside the house and, uh, yeah, so that's the that's, calls <laughs> coming from inside. The house. Yeah, that's that's my general uh, for my for my own sanity. My my view on suicide, like, oh, you think you're getting out if you you kill yourself? That's the you think oh. that that does it? No, -uh. you ain't yeah. getting out of here. I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, ask I Jessa don't... too. Jessa's not that Jessa has tried to kill herself or anything, but she's had so many close run-ins. It's like, yeah, believe me, it's not that easy to to yeah. not be in the matrix. You're gonna be in the matrix, so try to find a good time in it. That's 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 the worst thoughts that I've had in like various trips of manic episodes. Is just like, oh, you uh, you jumped off a building to uh to end this 
only to realize that your consciousness has actually just been in the sidewalk this whole time <laughs> waiting for your head to smash into it. And <laughs> that's what your whole purpose was this whole time. And now you're just a sidewalk, uh, a messy sidewalk. And <laughs> till they, till they find you and clean you up this afternoon. <laughs> and uh yeah so but i i don't i don't know how much i necessarily believe but i i toy with those those ideas for sure but i did i think i found myself like today when i woke up like off and then got better i am i i think i'm i think that's what i'm into is the there there's the like real deep lows are there's like such a great feeling coming out of it. You know, <laughs> there's like, such a, like there's Ram Dass such a says, relief. You know, Ram Dass says suffering is grist for the mill. It's grist uh, for the mill of your soul. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Cause there, there is, there's definitely there. It's, it's like that. It's like that. It's like the walking out and, seeing everyone else is also a giraffe exactly kind of, kind of relief like is it better to be a giraffe no but are you relieved at least everyone else is experiencing yeah it? and just think of not that not that either of us or i can't speak to you but it just doesn't sound like you're it doesn't sound like you're actually suicide or anything no. and i'm definitely not but just think of how privileged we are and that we're uh on a on a status level, none of us have Wikipedia's that have a section labeled, you know, alleg allegations or controversy or legal trouble or like mm -hmm. there's people whose lives have been tainted by their Wikipedia had now has a full section equivalent to their discography or filmography, like called sexual assault allegations mm -hmm. and legal troubles. They have a thing like that. Or people that are in such chronic pain that they're just they're just trying to not feel so, so, so bad for a second. And here we are, like, kind of having fun, talking, sitting, sitting casual. My back hurts a little bit, but it's not, it's not I what think some people there's, have. There's something about um, analyzing, like, wastefulness. If, if I'm, like, say I'm hungover or something and I lose four hours, I'm like, I don't have that to, I can't just, and now I have this. I have this like unhealthy relationship with alcohol where instead of in one it's first off, it's not bad in case like people are like, Oh, I'm worried about the, like I'm, I'm not, maybe I should be or whatever, but there's, there's like, just as a mindfulness um, thing, there's like a, I have like such a negative association now of like, oh, I'm doing something bad. Not bad, just like I'm wasting my time when, when I drinking? do this. Like I can't, I ha it's more that I can't let myself um, have a break and I can't let myself. So, so I finally, I, that was the other thing I had. Um, I took, I took time off of like producing the show and managing stuff to work on getting ready for this comedy central taping of uh tales uh, from the trip tales from the trip that'll come out in june and i was like oh, i'll put together this thought experiment and think it through a little bit for duncan's podcast and and then and i started and i started reading this book what's um, that bit uh, book? Uh, it's called Big. shape the Hidden Geometry of Information, Biology, Strategy, Democracy, and Everything Else. It's all about geometry. It just um, ends up as a heart, and it's like the answer is love. Regardless of what <laughs> shape that love takes in, it's it's the answer. And I there there was I was just enjoying doing the things that I think I should be doing. And then like we had some issues, um like just some technical things like we for example we have we have different for for listeners just like the endless amounts of little pesky boring stuff that is like behind the scenes of things ramin makes this incredible piece of art for every single episode and there's ways some apps like spotify allow you to add separate episode art for each things and 
some hosting platforms are supposed to allow you to do that automatically and we were having an issue so it was just the logo art and why not have the different art for every episode so when you're watching on spotify and you go to share this in the story to let people know to check out this episode and whatnot that that helps us out a lot and i feel like people are more inclined to share a story if it has that new piece of art every time and and it's just like this tiny little thing we weren't figuring out. And then we figure out like some little fix, you know, and still and, don't know how they did fixed. it. And there's just been endless stuff like that where I was just I, I was just like, I don't I don't want to waste my time with things. And I, I have this. So anyhow, so I have this like negative association of like, oh, if I'm drinking I'm wasting time. If I watch TV, I'm wasting time. So I can't enjoy a TV show anymore that I normally would because I, there's just like guilt attached to it or unproduct uh, yeah. productivity attached Catholic to it. Catholic shame, Midwest work ethic guilt, uh, generalized <laughs> existence guilt. And then that leaps to like, maybe it's all a waste anyway. What's the point? Like it goes from... Consciousness just uh, tr makes such outlandish leaps sometimes from these small little nuanced things to like, whatever, all of it's pointless anyway. And yeah, yeah, yeah and so. it's, it's I, I run into that too. Maybe not as, uh, mine is not as extreme, at least not that often, but definitely the what's the point and it all doesn't matter thing. But then you realize you're the only one suffering because of that conclusion and it does you no good to, you know, like be like, oh, I figured it out, everyone. There's no point. And I can beat any argument you throw at me that says there's a point because I've mm -hmm. got the superior brain or not superior brain, but at least the superior. My case is the winning case here. I know we've used the lawyer right. analogy before, but then you yeah. realize like if you if you win that case, you lose. Like if you argue for nihilism, it's it's a very uh lose lose case and the the feeling that triggers it of not being on top of everything i've realized that that's a trap there's just there's no such thing as being on top of everything there's no such thing as having all your messages replied to or um right. pay every bill or be where you want to be so it's like just accept you're always going to have tetris blocks falling and that your tetris is never going to be that clean slate that you want it's like there's always going to be some holes in the Tetris thing, there's new blocks coming, and that's kind of what you are. You're a little, you're a Tetris player. I haven't even played Tetris in like a decade, but that's the best analogy I could think of in the second. That's a fantastic analogy. That, yeah, that's like a, that could be a good piece of art. Yeah, you're dealt, uh, you're dealt a new hand every moment. A new problem arises, and you choose where to place it. And sometimes there's no great decisions. There's only less poor decisions, and it speeds up too. They, they had to know that as they're making it, at least at a subconscious level, like probably the Dmitry Rushkinov or whatever Russian dude that programmed it was probably like, <laughs> like, and as you get older, time goes faster because each year is smaller percentage of life. Whereas when you are one year old, another year is 50% of your life. Whereas when you are 80 years old, one year go by like this. So... We speed up blocks, and in the end, you die even if you play perfectly. <laughs> well, that's... that's... <laughs> I like that he's having that <laughs> metaphor as he's building the game Tetris. But that's why... that's what, that, That's an argument for, like, assessing... Um, things that could border into nihilism is, is that is that when you when you gain a more accurate version of the model of reality, it helps you build better models to go forward more, to make a better game, to make a more believable game and a game that resonates and is more in line with an aspect of life or or whatever else. And that's why you do have to teeter into like, well, that's just like, what if everything that's driving me right now is bullshit? And like, there's other things that I can try. There's in this book, actually, I just finished. There's a, have you heard of, um, local, um, local 
Optimums. Oh, Optimums? No, I haven't even heard of foreign Optimums. <laughs> what are Optimums? And how do we keep the the foreign Optimums away from the local Optimums <laughs> from taking our local jobs? <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn. Local, lo, local optima is optima. what it's called optimums yeah. is the plural yeah and uh, um why does every plural refer thing get to its local own thing optim local optimum and and local optima uh, um we don't use the s it, so, enough we should just put s behind stuff so it makes it plural so it's it's the it's the best solution within a neighborhood solution set. Uh, but but it doesn't. So the idea is it comes out of AI and like possibly our our brains are kind of doing similar things, which is that if if you want to get to a peak of a mountain and everything is covered in like bush and and. Uh, you know, you, you can barely get your way through it. Uh, you want to use, you want to kind of like look around a little bit and then go oh, that, that part looks like it's ascending. So I'll start going up that way, look around and I'll just keep on going toward the place that, uh, that feels like it's ascending. And that's the solution to get to the peak of the mountain. The problem with that is you might have just gotten to a peak of a hill like when you get to the top of it and it's nothing but descent locally you might think that you've reached the peak of but there's a much higher mountain that you haven't peaked mm. uh so so it's so ai can potentially stumble on what it believes is the correct solution the the perfect solution to something but it's just got itself stuck on what appears to be the peak, but there's another hill down the road, but you would, you would need to travel through a valley and descend for a long time to reach that other peak. So ways versus Google maps. Yeah. Or maybe the and, algorithms are kind of the same now, but before. Yeah. So the idea is, is that, that, uh, so my connection that I'm making to it here is sometimes you might need to feel out the valleys a little bit to make sure that you're actually on the right hill that you're trying to climb, mm. you know, and those valleys are dark. And, and you're <laughs> supposed to live in valleys anyway. My friend Harper always said, live, live in valleys, not in mountains. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, what, yeah. what do they mean by that? Well, just we're always uh striving to be like at the top like you want oh, every yeah. day to be like oh today is the day my special comes out and then tune in tomorrow when my next special comes out which is even bigger yeah. and bolder and more successful and then next week i'm doubling it instead of like you know having a peak and then going back to basic bitch land and then yeah feeling good again and it's it's so in our control because there's billionaires that have hung themselves and have been horribly depressed and there's been people with absolutely nothing to their name and have been happy so mm. it's not that it's all in our control of course there's mostly out of our control but there is control involved in your your happiness and you can you can get excited about a three dollar thing and you can get mm -hmm. not excited by a five thousand dollar thing yeah yeah well i i think this is I think this is why I've been like my depression is pumping the brakes on the because I've been thinking about when to tour again because if you are on Instagram you'll see every comedian is just out there touring and doing like the, the you know there's a lot, a lot of mass and distance shows and stuff like that and, and then there's not as well but there's also like everything when I see clips of someone it's like I think it's going to be better now that there's like, I talked to some people that were touring and they're like, in the beginning of COVID, if you're touring, it was the dumbest crowds you have ever performed. <laughs> of to. course. Of course. And, and, and now they're like, it's, it's not as extreme anymore, but, but the, uh, the thing is, is that there's like, when I see comics with videos that are like, 
oh, here's come out, come out to D- Dallas. Here's this highlight from last night <laughs> and of me dealing with a drunk. And it's just like a drunk yelling crazy dumb things at them and then them responding to it and getting a laugh like no guys that wait that was your highlight of the evening was when a drunk heckled you and and now you're putting like now you're encouraging more people to heckle us so anyhow you know you know how um have you ever uh uh, there, there's this, uh, there's this really dark idea. Have I ever told you about the mate rejection hypothesis? I haven't told. Oh, it's familiar, so. but I want to hear it again. Yeah, it's so. So you know when? Um, that's a fun thing ever, to say as a as a guy. That's if a guy hits on you, you like, um, or not a guy. If anyone hits on you, but normally it's the girl rejecting the guy. So for this example, if if a girl is trying to reject a man hitting on her can say like have you heard of the mate rejection hypothesis <laughs> no well now you have <laughs> it's it's now actually now it's a theory uh, and it's a law also it's actually about um being in a relationship so the idea it, you, you know when you uh so we were talking we were talking about um you know relationship fights i'm I literally in, in a relationship episode. right now yeah, not in a right. relationship fight, but I'm I'm literally in a relationship right now. And I and I'm not, but I. If I someone have... came on screen and you started making out, it's no big deal. If someone popped into the screen and started making out, it's a huge deal. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and I'm cool with it. That's what I signed up for, of course. I think it's just funny. Did I ever tell you, Cam? Not to go on too much of a tangent, but my friend Cameron, uh, when he had. Uh, gotten out of a very long-term relationship he was like it's so weird like you go from just there's one vagina and then you break up and then it's like the potential of every vagina and it's weird it's like (laughs) there should be some intermediary step between (laughs) one and then the potential of however many which which of course you know he's not like uh you know he's not justin timberlake or something that can have his his pick of mates as the alpha male, but also right. you know handsome guy could 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 do well for himself out there. Was just was pondering the potential of after the relationship, like it's too it's too much freedom. There needs to be an intermediary step between monogamy and too much freedom. Yeah, there's I there's ideas that like social media and porn too is making making us go like, whoa, look at all these opportunities out there. Look how <laughs> look how <laughs> look how up for action <laughs> all all these ladies are out there in the world. They're on my screen. Uh, they must exist out there in real life as well. But the uh, the the um, mate rejection thing is, you you know how if you are fighting with uh, with someone, this isn't, this isn't just like a mate. This is like anyone you'll just, you'll just, your consciousness shifts and you just start viewing them through a different lens. Yeah. You know, mustache twirling villain is what we call it in our household where like we've, we've both, I think Catherine term coined the term first, but we've both used it where it's like, you're, you're looking at me like a mustache twirling villain right now. I'm not, I'm just trying to articulate how I felt when you dropped that brick on my asshole or something. (laughs) Yeah. So someone drops a brick on your asshole and then you turn and you notice like a wrinkle that you hadn't noticed before, or like this, this, like this part of their affect that you used to think was the cutest thing imaginable is now the thing that drives you crazy. And, and just because you're fighting in that moment and the, and the lawyer, Mm -hmm. uh, you you know, switched sides, like the defense became the plaintiff all of a sudden in your head and starts building a completely different case. Well, the idea with the mate rejection hypothesis is this interesting one, which is because of birth control, there's uh, there's this uh, birth control never happened to any species before. And there's this there's this one bird that is completely monogamous. Most birds are like penguins? 80%. Is it the penguin? I thought penguins I were monogamous. Th- I, I don't think I don't think that they're a hundred percent monogamous. Stan so, Hope used it in a joke. Maybe that's where I'm getting it from. Well, birds are birds 
pair bond, and then they also fool around. They're they're actually really close to human mating patterns, which is there's a lot of social pair bonds, and then there's a little fooling around going uh, goes on um, behind the scenes, and um, but but this uh, uh, so it's like. The tens pair off with the tens, the nines pair off with the nines, the eights pair off with the eights, and and so on. And then sometimes, in terms of like, fitness or what? Yeah, yeah, like because uh, uh, attractiveness you know. to them is probably just straight up fitness and more plumage, right? Is that what you mean by the tens? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, and so then um. Uh, yeah, which is usually plumage is uh, like has something to do with their fitness in terms of like their immune system is, uh, is really good against parasitic threats and that sort of thing. And so, but then the, the female can sometimes like say the female's like a four, she can, she can go off, find like a, a nine or 10 guy out there go and get some of his seed and then have her like other four guy raise those, um, those kids. And she has lots of the four guys too, but it's a way of you're, you're getting some of the, that's what the cuck holding idea is. You're getting, you're getting like a, a 10 uh, seed the, and a the, four the, the tens, deed. Uh, yeah. You're getting, you're getting all the, um, all the help around the house from, from your four guy and you're having some of his kids as well, but there is one, there's a species of bird that's like a hundred percent monogamous. When they pair bond, they they there's no cheating, no nothing. They are together, and the only time they break up is if after a mating season, they don't breed, um, and they they have a, uh, uh, or they didn't. It didn't lead to any eggs. Didn't lead to any babies. They break up if they can't. So like Henry the Eighth style or whatever. If the if they don't have babies, then they break up. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and is it a problem between the two of them, or sometimes one of them is like it's, the problem? It's usually just that there's not a compatibility. Like they're both probably compatible with somebody else, and there's just some incompatibility with their particular set of genes, and so they'll break up and go and find someone else. But probably if you're that bird, probably what the conscious, what that consciously feels like is, is you you aren't going, Oh, I don't have any genes or I haven't, they haven't given me an air or whatever. It's probably like, ah, he's always making a mess around the nest or (laughs) whatever, like building up this case until eventually like, I never know what I saw in this person in the first place, (laughs) stupid bird. And then they fly off and go and find, find someone else. Yeah, Birdella and I are through. I'm seeing Birdette now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Birdella's a fat cunt. Did I did I ever tell you that Birdella? God damn it! What's the new one? What did I ever tell you? My new bird girl. I'll abandon that bit. Whatever. Only one out of ten bits make it. Uh, you're you got like a nine out of ten ratio. Oh, I'm a nine. Hell yeah. Yeah. I like I like walk around like I don't think people have asked me what number I think I am. I don't think anyone's really asked that in a while. But you know, if someone asks, like, "What do you think yourself as?" Like, just just always go real low. Just be like two, and they're like, "You're not a two. I'm like, "Oh, thank you." But if you start to be like, "Well, you know, I see myself as like a high eight, a low nine, uh, something like that." Just don't do that. You give yourself a two or a one or a zero. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, yeah, what are these monogamous birds called? Uh, I forget the name of them, but the but the, Christopher the, the, Ryan I, wants to exterminate them. <laughs> the, <laughs> we must eliminate that gene from from the entire gene pool, or it might escape. Well, the idea is extending this idea of mate rejection to humans is that because of birth control, you're you're getting together with someone, you're banging away for a year or whatever, and after a year goes by. Now, like normally you would have after a year of sex, normally there would be like a baby bump, if not a baby. And and there's not. And there has to be uh, consciousness has to be like, 
there has to be something going on going like why aren't we having why isn't it a baby coming out is there some incompatibility because this never happened in our evolutionary past and so maybe it's making us like see the person differently and and setting off these drives so that we're harder on people than we would be if you were actually just like having having kids you'd be like oh that's the uh, beautiful like mother of my child or the proud dad of, like look at that look at that dad bod isn't that <laughs> dad bod great whereas like you can be some jacked dude but if no baby's coming out you're gonna eventually like think oh that guy's an asshole or something so there's these subconscious drivers pushing you to reject it and and see it and like notice flaws that you that really aren't there or you're kind of like imagining or making up and that's that's a little bit of how i feel with stand-up comedy um <laughs> right now after after like 14 months of watching like guys farting into microphones while giving covid uh <laughs> advice and then like oh all these like it, all all the stuff that uh that's happened and now and now watch i don't know it's just like but also what? we we must uh we must take into account that w uh, comics were already degenerates and yeah. so it shouldn't have been expected we should yeah and and there's so many like really really smart comics out there and everything and i i'm still amused by like i i love seeing great people and i still see like what's it phil hanley or something like that i mm. um is that his name phil hartman I, he's dead his wife phil killed him hanley and is herself a, he's a comic that's like done some late night spots and stuff but I've, I've seen a couple of his clips that he posted lately and i'm like that's solid that's solid material. There we go. Jokes. Yes. <laughs> Great joke. Clever writing. Um, and, uh, but, but yeah, some of the stuff that I see, I'm just like, what did I, I cared so much. I was like such a comedy purist and I cared so much about this thing and like was inspired by, by this like art form. And now, Sometimes I look at it and I'm like, this isn't an art for what is this like trashy fucking That's how and you're know, a real comic. I know it's not uh, I know it's not right. I know that's just like on an aspect of of comedy, but um but and there's like so many amazing talented people out there and that's just like my negativity bias uh going off. And oh, I've got I've got at, extra like, if you need it. I don't think you'll ever run out, but I have so much negativity bias. I have to weed through it in the day. I have to like constantly do a counter hit back. Like the the first instinct, like my my lizard brain just wants to hate every image that's shown to me on a billboard, on a clip, on a something. You're just always like this stupid asshole. Oh, good. I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah. Cause I Because I was feeling... <laughs> I was feeling really like down about it. No, it's and... poison. But thankfully, I recognize that that's the the dark side, and I don't want that in me. And it doesn't feel too good to have that. And you you explore it more, and it's because you're like, well, you're just projecting onto other people what you see as a deficit in yourself. Blah blah blah. But yeah, yeah it's so hard not to just be envious, jealous, or just hateful towards the other tribe, the other monkey face you're seeing. I, and I, I, I like feel... to transmute it too. I, I try to do that as often as I can. If there's a podcast guest on Mark Maron or something that I think I'll hate them, I'll be like, I'm going to give them a shot and I'm going to see if I can I turn do that around. Sometimes. Am I going to turn around? Am I going to love Mindy Kaling after this episode? Am yeah, I going to yeah, yeah. love like, whoever it is and then see them as I... a human? Like, oh, actually, they're really funny. I didn't know that. I was I try to I try to do that sometimes too. I I think for me it's it's more of a it's more of like I keep on it, I, I I consider myself a humanist if not a transhumanist like You're transhumanist? Hell yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. I mean I I I, I used to be for sure. I was like, trying to make a transition joke. It didn't work though. Uh, oh yeah. It's, it's this isn't a gender reveal it's a, i want to upload my brain into a computer I was, and be a <laughs> oh me too 
Yeah, the virtual <laughs> world would kick so much more ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what the trans. I think the transhumanism word was coined before um, before the trans movement really. No, <laughs> took it, off, was, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. But uh, oh, it wasn't. No, because trans. The word transsexual has been around forever, and then yeah. transgender and stuff, and. Uh, and transhuman is such a product of what the late nineties or late eighties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got, I, yeah, I got into like the, what's the curse well stuff and whatnot for, for a while there. And, uh, and so, but anyway, I do like, I have part of the reason why I do like science communications is like, I'm not, I don't think that I'm smarter than I think that anyone can get this stuff and i'm the example that like if if a fuck up like me can go and learn this stuff anyone can and so i i just feel like uh it, it's more of a disheartened of of like i can't i don't want to get my hope up for humanity again because <laughs> i am feeling like pretty hopeful right i think things are like feeling like they're heading in the right direction and and then there's just a part of my brain going oh this trick again but isn't it, i mean humanity is a weird thing to kind of cling to put, permanently because who knows what we will evolve into or devolve into or whether we right. whether we become ex forget the you know going extinct part of it or even becoming a computer think of how different we are compared to our grandparents a hundred years ago. Like right. what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is just, I wouldn't even been able to explain it to them. The mm -hmm. amount of content we absorb and think nothing of it from all angles, whether it's news, our social media, peers, music, pornography, just so much of it. Whereas before seeing a little video of a horse galloping was just, it would blow your mind to see a motion yeah, picture. Yeah. And now we see HD motion pictures nonstop. Yeah. I've, I wonder how much of it is just like frustrations that I have always had. I mean, I've, I've, I've also realized in COVID that I'm like, oh, I'm just a frustrated, like <laughs> naturally I just like, I'm like, I was frustrated since like the age of five. Yep. Like that's, I just do frustration. Like, frustration. well, it's just frustration. sort of my thing. It's so much fun. What was that board game? <laughs> there was a board game called frustration in the nineties. Trouble, sorry, frustration, perfection. <laughs> We're really so, setting us, setting ourselves up for failure. So, yeah, I, I think it's, I think that's what I, that's what I went through recently. And I just had like a real drastic dip. Like it just really felt like things like fell off the cliff, wanted to give up everything. And then I was like, so I'm going to get on a talk. And now, and now talking about it, I'm just like, well, now I'm just trying to reconjure a thing that I'm no longer even experiencing. Yeah. Like the I lawyers feel again. totally, I, to I feel totally fine. The lawyer is um, trying to bring up the old evidence uh, again, <laughs> not relevant yeah. to the case. Isn't that liberating the allowing yourself to just drop whatever bullshit you had because we uh, don't want to be a contradiction it's like but you said you were sad this morning oh well, i'm not now uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like just be fine with dropping whatever like your whole be a be a jehovah's witness for three years and then just be like mm, i don't like that anymore i dropped it mm -hmm. yeah yeah what can so i drop that's that. like i always think of what i need to drop that i don't know anymore like whether we have uh embedded racism homophobia misogyny like however much we we have that we don't know that we have not to like overcompensate or something but yeah to, well that like what do i not know that i need to drop within the next 10 years that now i'm like oh looking back i was so blind i was living a life of shadow that that's why i i um i like the yeah, that's that's where I that's where I felt with suicidal ideation for a while, where it's just like I've already been I've been through this conversation. You've had this conversation with yourself a thousand times. You know, it, like it's it would it would be one thing to sit and have this conversation again 
if you thought like, oh, I'm actually going to kill myself this time. And now we're going to start playing. Like, that would be one thing. But when I know that I'm not going to, then like, then what's all the fuss about? Like, what's all this time and energy being spent thinking about a thing, thinking about doing a thing that you know you're not going to do anyway? It's just such an incredible waste of of energy and and bandwidth and everything maybe and it's then a, i feel it's a, guilty about that maybe it's a cool way of like finding some zest for life but like you have to come from the the pit rather than reach for the clouds right away so it's i think in, so in starting at the very bottom like what it's yeah it's starting from first principles why live at all why not end it completely? And then you start building from that. And it's like, I'm going to go for a bike ride now at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, Whereas it's yeah. not like, how do we make today the best day? Because life rules. Like, I'm not feeling it right now. Life doesn't rule. And I know it's coming from a place of personal privilege, point of personal privilege. But you got to uh, you gotta still work your way out of it the way you can. And some people are more turned off by it than others. The, yeah, the talk yeah, of suicide. Yeah. Some people can joke about it all day. And then some are like, I'm so sorry. Well, there's a num- yeah, there's a yeah. number you can call. Like you're trying to look up Suicide Machines, the band on Google, and like before it shows you the band, it's like the number you can call. Feeling down, you can call this number, which the number is great too. The number does work on some people, I'm sure. And uh, I've had friends that yeah, work for them, and it's a wonderful the organization. Yeah, and Suicide Prevention number. Lives Matters, but. Um, but it's fun to make I, fun of it too. I I didn't make fun of enough people today. I normally am making fun of left and right. Like, who, is, who are you, Oprah? You're stupid. What are you, Joe <laughs> Rogan? What are you, a, a dumb? Are you a dumbbell that likes to give COVID to people? <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy, Elon Musk? Hey, why aren't you curing cancer instead of dressing up like Mario and doing a song and dance routine? <laughs> Get back in your invention lab. <laughs> Go invent shit instead of tweeting. Get back in your invention. <laughs> Isn't that funny? He's since he's a billionaire inventor entrepreneur, there's a pressure on him to solve problems because he's demonstrated that he can solve problems. Whereas there's no pressure on me to solve problems because I'm like, I was yeah. never in the problem solving business. If I'm on <laughs> SNL, it's all good. He's on SNL, fuck that guy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't mind that he was on <laughs> SNL. I I mean it does it, it is he does insert himself into issues a little t- you know like the submarine thing that he did for like the Chilean ch- children and it was just kind of like well we wish you actually would what did he do he put all the like, Chilean children he, in a submarine he, yeah he tried to like well we thought a he, problem could be solved by uh, by uh expanding the um the, the submarine by um uh by a magnitude of fifty uh, percent would fit in more uh, Chilean he children. he wanted to make a submarine to save children in a cave great idea you should uh, awesome you want to build a little submarine to get kids out great and then people were like actually we that your submarine's not going to work it will kill people we have a different idea and he's like you're an a-. like he he then went and attacked the people like <laughs> trying to the autism because, rage okay like because, i'm sorry if i offend people by saying asperger's or autism or something but you know it's a the the trope of you know, the, the autistic kid, not all kids with autism, of course, it's a giant mm-hmm. field of things, but I'm specifically referencing an episode of Succession where his kid with autism is playing with the toy and they're like, come on, sit for dinner. Like, here, give me that. And trying to take away the toy, like just caused him to rage out and demonstrate super strength and that kind of thing. So, and isn't yeah. Elon Asperger's or autistic or one of uh, yeah, something like that? Yeah, I guess that's like what that? he says. So, I don't know, I don't know so enough they tried, about it, but yeah. They tried to take his submarine and then he just raged out. Is what they, you're they, they wouldn't use his submarine. Mm. And then he started like lobbing personal attacks at the people that were like trying to save kids. Is he a they, boomer or Gen X? I, I forget I how know. old he is, but I, I was hearing like 50. there was this interesting talk I was hearing with, I think it was George Hotz on Lex Friedman podcast. And they were talking about the the space age and how boomers like they had the narrative of space exploration as a thing to hope for because it made sense in that in the time they're living in and now Mm -hmm. the space exploration narrative just doesn't fit with the postmodern world like we need a different thing to kind of aim our sights on i don't know what that is yet whether it's the virtual world or 
or what, but just space doesn't do it for us. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, we're going to live on Mars. Like, don't give a shit. We're going to live on Mars and Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to leave the it. galaxy. I, I don't care. I'm still going to be in this meat suit dealing with these problems. Doesn't matter what planet I'm on. Yeah, yeah. I I thought I thought COVID was going to be the thing. Early on, I naively was like, COVID's going to bring everyone together. Uh, like, oh no, that's that no. was a foolish idea. But people born but, uh, like past a certain, or people from a certain time born before a certain year, like care about space. And then people mm. past a certain year, just no, nah, just that never, never, never did it for me because it because we didn't grow up with the moon landing and the rockets and the innovation there it just it just seems my whole life it appears as though nasa has done nothing of course that's not true you get articles every day of they found fungus on mars and there's this uh you know planet that could hold life but it's 16 light years away as opposed to 30 light years away which was the other one we found a decade ago but it's still <laughs> and then you realize that all those photos that were making you excited were just artist renderings there is no photo of jupiter or there is photo of jupiter sorry but uh when they're like scientists find planet that could support human life and it's this beautiful purple iridescent rainbow planet and then it's like artist rendering by Jorge, yeah, yeah. Jorge Rodriguez, and then you're like, oh, it's just some guy that painted that. That's not really what NASA yeah, found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, yeah. I'm going real I, hard on NASA. I'm sorry. I, well, I, I can't even got, calculate acceleration. Yeah, we. <laughs> they're doing like complicated formulas, and they're like, hey, find the mass in this simple physics 101 problem. And I'm like, hmm. <sighs> Oh, that's uh, I started. I started reading this geometry book, and I was because I I like thinking of myself as someone who. I mean, I do think that mathematical thinking is a thing, um, and and I always am like, oh, I'm like a mathematical thinker. I took I took to it very naturally, and then um, and then I started reading this book about geometry, and I was like, oh yeah, I haven't done math in twenty five <laughs> years, and. It's hard and it's it a takes lot of symbols time. to keep up with. And you, it's like you don't read it the same way if you're not living in that world. If every mm-hmm. sentence you have to be like, what does X mean? What does that backwards E with the, the, the coat hanger thing on it mean? Oh, OK, wait. And what image does that generate? Whereas like, I mean, I'll see it in my brother's office. He's a professor at Boston University and he has just gibberish on his board and I don't understand what any of it means and then he understands yeah, what yeah. all of it means. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Well, that's uh it, that's I just realized we've been going for 2 hours. Oh, cool. I thought Should we, we wrap were, like, it up? Just past the, yeah, let's wrap it up. This was about this something, is... right? Was it about anything? Well, we got we went a lot of places. I, we we were going to explore darkness a little bit, and then we got into death and if it happens or not. And uh, wouldn't it be quite a relief if you did turn into a zebra? A front, giraffe, or, uh, not a zebra. A giraffe, uh, don't care uh, about no, zebra. Don't care about zebra. Zebras was last week. Yeah. This week's very giraffe heavy. If if. Uh, if you did getting find yourself becoming, a, <laughs> if you did find yourself becoming a, a um, giraffe, at least you can find solace in knowing everyone else is a giraffe too. So go and get a vaccine because you don't want to be the star belly sneech that isn't a giraffe, and that's still just a human when now everyone's doing the giraffe thing and that's the coolest thing yeah. in town and you don't want to miss out on that like crypto and clubhouse is dead and uh kind of uh feeling out feeling out stand up comedy booking again and how we think about that so yeah that was uh that was a good eventful show full of tons of stuff yeah it was a real I've, show I feel like I learned a lot about your perspectives on things um, on this one, where usually I'm like, boy, I just I just gave Vermeen a heck of a bunch of lectures in there. And fortunately, he made it all super funny. <laughs> and this one, I was like, oh, yay, we got to hear more Vermeen Hell perspective yeah. on I brought this some, one. I brought some concepts. Good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the next one, 
I think the next one might be a Ramin day, learning all about the origin story of Ramin oh, Nazar. Yeah. That might be, that's kind of what I, that's kind of what I have planned for the next one. So we'll see. All these things are, all these things are fluid and we don't know exactly what you're going to get, but we have a direction and a scope of where we're heading um, and what, what peaks we're going to start ascending and we might, veer off in other ways as well um because we don't want to get stuck in local optima and so with that um that's our episode everybody and till um, next time keep on salivating honeys ding Hope you enjoyed the show, everybody. Uh, next week, we have a really terrific conversation uh, about kind of our origins in comedy and uh, and and what a little bit of what we were like in school, what got us to pursue our dreams, uh, what got Ramin into art, what got me into like math, and basically how we uh, started our comedy origin story. And we have a very cool treat now available for you which we have a whole store lined up with amazing art that we've made for mind under matter what's on there ramin and how do people so far find it? you can go to mindunderpod.com if you read that word as one thing it looks like it says misunderstood when you look at it but it's mind under pod <laughs> so you go to mindunderpod.com check out the store we've got a beautiful shirt with the logo on it we've got a beautiful shirt with the honey bear on it Ooh. and we've got a beautiful shirt with our our heads outlined in neon if you're a true true fan and you want to wear shirts of two dudes and then people are like who are those dudes or maybe you'll see someone who knows us already and they're like you got the shirt of the two dudes don't yeah. want a shirt we've got a beautiful button we've got a beautiful mug and we're going to be adding more stuff to the merch store as we're putting out more episodes uh, as we've said before, we don't have any sponsors. We don't have any advertisers. This is just straight up show. And so the way that we can afford to pay our staff, which we have a staff that we pay to produce the show, to do all the yeah. editing and all that, we do that through merch sales. So you can really help support the shirt, the show by getting a shirt or something else from the merch store or check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash mindunderpod. Uh, you'll get access to a bonus episode every month and our other series called Mind Under Art, where you get to select an art piece I've done, ask questions about it, and Shane interviews me about what I was thinking when he, I made this art and what it makes him feel. And it's it's an equal show to Mind Under Matter. It's a separate show. So you get another show, bonus episode of the show, a community to join, love, yeah. your financial problems will be solved by giving us your finances exactly and uh, i get i get a lot of t-shirt compliments for me and i've i've been told uh, i i have good t-shirt tastes i always have like today i have uh all sorts of ocean life Ooh. in this cool sort of cooler thing. than aliens ocean and life is even cooler than aliens it is aliens and it so is. uh and so we're we're making shirts that we would wear i'm i'm getting some delivered right now um so not only does that support the show but it also helps uh, uh boost the boost the signal because people are like what's with that adorable honey bear on your shirt and then you can tell them about this show which opens the door for you to share all of the interesting ideas that you've learned uh from the show and it's made you think about which i know there's tons and you're just looking for an opportunity to blab about them with others because i'm always looking for an opportunity to blab about this stuff that I've learned. So it just keeps on getting passed on and passed on. And it's fun to learn and grow and have great conversations. And the shirt will help you do that. So that's the hard sell. Get into it. And uh, you guys are absolutely terrific. Thanks for all the support.